Um, and thank you for the invitation coming here today. It's uh, my first time in Ukraine, and I've uh, been uh, in Dnipro right before this, and uh, this is my first day in Kiev, so I'm very excited to be here. Um, I am uh, going to talk about um, urban power and our approach to, uh, to urbanism. So our firm is uh, based here in uh, Copenhagen, in, in the city center, in the historic parts, in the small building. And um, just to tell you a little bit about uh, what context we're working with, I just want to show a few images of uh, Copenhagen, where we're based. First, I hope you can see them down in the back. Um, first of all, Copenhagen has now become the, the bike capital of the world. Or maybe we, we're still fighting with Amsterdam a little bit to see uh, where that's at. But um, it's, uh, it's working very well because uh, more than 50% of the people are actually biking to work. So we don't have much uh, uh, car traffic in the city. And actually, the, 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 the bicycling has also become an experience that uh, tourists come to Copenhagen to, 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 uh, to join because uh, it has become a special thing in the city. Um, then we have a, a special way here that we are engaging new areas where we're going to uh, develop uh, housing areas um, where we are using temporary uh, activities to um, make the city life come to the place before the city comes there. And, and finally, we, we have had a uh, transformation of the industrial harbor, um, which is now cl closed down and has become this recreational area. Uh, the water has been so cleaned that you can, uh, you can now sleep, uh, uh, swim in, uh, in the water. So that's a very attractive thing in the city. But it's not always been like that, and people who come to Copenhagen have difficulties understanding that, that it's actually a quite new thing, that, is, that the city is so livable, as we call it. If you go back 30, 40 years, the city looked very different, and uh, at some point in the, in the 70s, um, there was more and more car traffic coming in to the city, as you can see here. And here, a new big high was, well, highway was, uh, was being built. And um, at some point, the, the people of Copenhagen said, uh, stop. And they actually uh, were able to um, argue against a highway the way they were proposed to go through the city center. And from that on, uh, the, the thing started to change. And we slowly became a, a, more, a more a city for, for bicycling. And the, the industrial harbor was uh, a very uh, big engine uh, and a big, very big uh, workspace in Copenhagen. And that has been completely abandoned uh, since about 20 years ago. This is the office, uh, or part of it. And uh, we are, this is the three partners. We started five years ago. And not to talk about ourselves, just to want to give you some faces on this. But, um, we, uh, we changed our name last year to Urban Power. So uh, this firm that we are now presenting is quite new, but it's the same as we had uh, five years ago. Uh, we are working with uh, what we call sustainable, creating sustainable cities. And uh, just to show you why we think that is important, I want to go a little bit into statistics. It shouldn't be too boring, and I don't want to spend too much time on that, but just to give you a little uh, feeling of what we're dealing with. Um, and this is, of course, the Danish statistics, because I don't have the Ukrainian uh, ones. So I will try to get that for the next time. But uh, we're talking a lot about that in Denmark, we have 50 square meters per person for, uh, for housing, which is quite a lot. And there's been debates going on about if, if we should minimize that to make it more sustainable, to have them live closer together. Uh, but that's hard for people to, to go down on their comfort zone. So we're saying at the Urban Power, maybe we should not look so much about just the specific buildings, but actually look at the overall urban areas that are in total taking up more than 1,000 square meters 
per person. So this is all this is just for one little guy. If we count all of Denmark on an average, and uh, this is of course uh, spaces in between the buildings, parking, infrastructure, etc. So here is really a potential of uh, working with these areas and making the cities more attractive, <laughs> and in that way also making them uh, more dense. So what we are working with are um, transformation, urban transformation as we call it, and we add new layers, new values into the existing urban fabric. That's how we define uh, urban transformation. And um, what we are working with uh, are infrastructural solutions, densifications, um, creating urban spaces, and um, one of the new things that is uh, very big in Denmark now is climate adaption projects. Um, so we are integrating that more and more into uh, the, uh, the urban developments. Um, due to the climate change, we have an increasing rainwater uh, in, in Denmark, and we also are fighting against uh, rising sea levels. And um, that's something that takes up more and more of the, of the efforts in the urban strategies these days. Um, we are working with this circle here that we call uh, architecture, urbanity, and public space together. Uh, it's important for us that if we create a building, which we also do sometimes, that it's a part of the city and we see it more of how it actually acts in the city than the building itself and that the public space um, uh, around the building is also very important for how the city works. So we always try to, to see this triangle. And then uh, some of the projects that we are working with, some of the most interesting ones, are the ones we call our proactive projects. And um, that means that we are starting up some ideas that we have in the office. We actually have, um, have made a rule uh, for ourselves that we have to make one project every year without a client. That's something that we want to do and something we finance ourselves. Uh, and in that way, we try to, uh, to participate in the debates about where the city should go and what should happen. And um, then at the same time, we actually get a lot of uh, PR and uh, attention out of it also. So it really works well. And um, this is from a project that I will show in a moment uh, that we presented for uh, Copenhagen. And it was, uh, it was one of the most read news in the, in the building industry uh, last year. So it really says something about that architects and urbanists can really approach this uh, in an independent way. You don't have to sit around and wait for, uh, for a client to call. And this project um, the, is called uh, Norhaleøen, North Hale Island, and it's a project that is trying to um, deal with some of the main problems uh, we have in Copenhagen and actually solve three problems uh, in one project. The first issue is, um, is about flooding. And this is climate change that is uh, affecting the, the sea levels. We had uh, a big flooding of uh, parts of Copenhagen about five years ago. And uh, it really opened up the eyes for some people and politicians that we have to do something about it. And if we take a quick look at uh, how Copenhagen have developed over the last 200 years, uh, it is clear that we are actually building more and more into the ocean. This was, of course, due to the fact that it was an industrial city with an industrial harbor, and it had to be uh, developed and, and take up a lot of space. But since that has closed down, the city keeps expanding out into the city, or into the ocean, sorry. And um, if we take a map of the areas that are in risk of being flooded, we realize that it's actually all the new urban areas that we have built in the, in the last uh, few hundred years, because they're just very close to the sea level. 
So something has to be done here. And so far, uh, this is the project that the Copenhagen municipality decided that we have to do some kind of barrier here along the coast. Another problem that we are uh, facing is increasing traffic. I said before that we are a bicycle city. We are, um, but we also uh, fighting with in increased traffic, especially on the on the bigger roads. And there's been a debate going on for yeah, maybe the last 20 years that we have to do a new tunnel around the city here. And uh, the politicians are very much for or against, and uh, the discussion becomes very black and white, and there's not really any alternatives coming up. The third problem that we are dealing with in this project is that uh, Copenhagen is growing, and we're expecting to have 33% uh, um, more inhabitants in Copenhagen in the next 20 years. Of course, it's hard to predict these things, and uh, you never know. But this is the way it's pointing right now. And um, the previous plan of Copenhagen, Copenhagen um, from, uh, from the early 90s dictated a new part of the city placed in this area here. And part of it is already built down here. And now uh, they want to start the next part, which is here. But as you see, it's in the middle of the green areas. And um, there, there's a lot of people that are uh, fighting ag against that. So you see this is from a demonstration about uh, not building on this green field. And um, I think they also discovered some new species of plants and animals there, which makes it really hard for the politicians to say, OK, we'll do it anyway. So there's, they're actually looking into ways of uh, finding other place to build now. But our solution uh, to this is to say, instead of seeing urban development as a problem and trying to house people uh, in, in spaces where you can find space, we should see it as a potential and try to, um, to make something great out of it. So what we're proposing is that instead of making just a, a new ring road uh, around the city here on a bridge or a tunnel here, um, we should um, build more metros. We have a metro in Copenhagen, but we should connect this with bicycling and metro and then keep the, the cars down a bit. And then we have this special area here um, where the water comes into the city. And this is where we are zooming in and uh, proposing our proposal. And first of all, there need to be this water barrier that has already been decided. It can be a big wall, or it can be uh, some some uh, stones. But it can uh, doesn't. It, it's not necessarily very interesting in in, in itself. But um, yeah, and then on, in, on the back side we have this historic fortification um, that we want to protect and give a distance to. And then we're proposing that we should have a green bicycle ring here around this, the harbor and then keep um, the cars and the metro here on the barrier and build that together with that barrier. This gives us a new island here in the middle um, where we can make space for some of this housing that would otherwise be built in, uh, in the green field. And um, here you don't really bother anybody except for the fish, but uh, they have space out here, so they're okay. Um, this um, is also um, proposing a new harbor for the, for the big ships that we have in here. But um, they, uh, there's already spaces out here that they're building for the cruise ships. So it makes good sense to put the ferries here together with the metro. And then the small boats can go in and out here. So all in all, we're proposing uh, this um, island here that is not only um, a water barrier, but it's also a new um, neighborhood of Copenhagen. And it's a landscape park and a recreational area. And the good thing is that this can actually be uh, funded by uh, private investors, because there is this n need of building housing. So the, the money the city can make on selling 
the rights to build here will actually pay for, um, for the water barrier and, um, and the road connection. So it's, it's a good business case and it's uh, therefore very hard for the politicians to, to be against that. And um, yeah, so this was something that we proposed uh, last year and uh, we got a lot of attention. We had some meetings with, the, with the, um, some of the politicians. Actually, we invited all the parties uh, at our election time and all the, the, the politicians that had been fighting uh, each other, saying we are against or we are for this harbor tunnel, they were suddenly interested in this project because they could all see something positive in it. But while they're still fighting with this project, um, the phone rang and the municipality uh, next to Copenhagen call us and say, hey, we would like to build an island. So, so we're doing an island right next to, to, um, to Copenhagen now. And it's also um, a, cl a climate barrier. In this place, it, you, there used to be also a green area <coughs> uh, about 50 years ago. And then this was developed into the biggest industrial area in, in Denmark. And it's a very effective, very um, well working uh, industrial area because it's well connected with the highway and everything. And um, this is what it looks like when you're flying over it. And it's so um, well functioning that this municipality want to expand it to the double size. So they actually hired an engineering firm that uh, just continued this line and said, OK, so we are filling it up here. And, uh, and making it double size. But then they called us and said, hey, uh, guys, do you have some ideas for how to make this more interesting? Because we are afraid that if we just propose that, all these organizations that like the nature, they will, they will come and, and stop this project. So we said, um, yes, let's make, uh, remake these islands that were there before. So instead of just creating another industrial area, we will make some small islands within industries and um, green tech firms. And then around, we will make uh, this green zone that will become an attractive uh, recreational area. And with these small lagoons where you can sail in between. And this is actually not official yet. So uh, you can't talk about this project because it uh, will be presented in, uh, in Copenhagen next month. So nobody really knows about it yet. They're trying to keep it secret. But um, I think it's okay to show it here. Uh, um, one, one part, uh, an interesting part of this project is that we are making a new sewage plant uh, in one of these islands that will take all the dirty water from the whole Copenhagen region and collect it here and clean it and at the same time get uh, clean energy out of the, the water. Um, by making gas that can uh, produce energy for about um, 100,000 um, houses. And this is what it will look like. It's not a typical industrial area anymore. It will be more the nature and the re new recreational areas that will be in focus. Then uh, also other projects where we're working with um, the combination of infrastructure and climate adaption and urban development. And one of them that's on a smaller scale is uh, in a smaller town um, called Hellaslo, where we have this area here that's the backside of this beautiful historic uh, town with an, with an old uh, church. And in this area, um, there's a lot of uh, um, ugly roads and buildings, and it's kind of the the service area of the city. And it's also an area that is very low, so when it rains a lot, it it be it it can be flooded, and it has been. This is um, a picture from the 60s, and it happens about every 50 years. So we were working with the municipality and uh, and showing them what it will look like if this water comes up to this level once again and will destroy the buildings. So um, when we came into the city and started working with this project, the city already had a solution. And the solution was to, to uh, dig a big hole and put a huge pipe in and have all the water coming out of the city this way. 
but it's a very ex extreme expensive uh, way of treating the water so um, we said um, and proposed to them instead of uh, collecting the water down here and le letting it down into a pipe why not cut out this uh, parking lot and uh, make a, a, um, a base in here that can um, contain the water when it rains a lot and then slowly lead it out so um, we're going from a situation that looks like this where we have this hill up here and the water are being uh, collected in these ponds to a situation where the water it will be controlled and slowly be let out into the fjord that is um, down here. And um, then we get a situation that will look like this in the future, instead of the previous image, uh, when it rains a lot, and then when it rains extremely much, like every 50 years, uh, the water can still be contained here and the houses are safe. And then at the same time, we are creating a new attractive park because uh, the money that is spent here, instead of burying them underground, they are using the same money to, to make this pond and to make this landscape park. And um, that means that this town get a possibility of developing new housing, which would otherwise be very difficult in this area because it's not a very attractive area at the moment, but it will be with this uh, new installation. So that's currently ongoing right now. This is uh, what the whole thing looked like when we are taking the parking spaces and breaking it up into smaller pockets and put it in between the buildings. And then we have this long uh, connection here all going through the, this park and the water running down from the, from the hill here and into being cleaned in these steps and running out into this, to these ponds. So uh, on an urban scale, we're going from this uh, area here where we have the downtown area with this, some old historic buildings here, single family houses here, and then this big dissolved area. And then we creating this kind of uh, central park, you can say, with, with a clear defined edge. And uh, in the future, um, when everything is done, it will, will look like this. Yeah. Um, we are also working on other urban projects on, on an even smaller scale um, you know, in some other small towns. And um, this is uh, in, the, in the same region of Denmark. And as in many other towns around the world, people are not using the, the city center so much anymore because they can buy their things online, so they don't have to go to the shops. So they're, they're facing a difficult time. And um, we're proposing here a strategy um, where we're ch trying to change um, the city center into an, a green and active uh, center. And we are trying to change the, the town from being a traditional shopping district into an experience street. So a place where you can go and feel things, touch things, taste things. There are some things that you can still not do on the internet. And um, that includes um, the physical things and meeting other people. And we're doing this with, with two different uh, initiatives. One of them is installing new functions and engaging people in using the, the town in a new way. And then at the same time, getting the whole uh, area a visual upgrade. And uh, it's something that is very much bottom up and people are involved in it and starting to build these um, new furnitures that are being installed so people can, can meet there. The facades being renovated and the first activities are now being uh, implemented as well. And we slowly see that the, the city is starting to change into something more attractive. <coughs> the next thing I want to talk about is, um, is urban transformation in, uh, in a very um, international uh, style, which are these um, uh, prefabricated industrial buildings that 
you, we see all over the world. Um, I've noticed you also have a few of them in Ukraine. Um, and we were working with, uh, with, the, with the biggest one in, in Denmark. It's this one, it's two kilometers long, and it's uh, built in, uh, in the early 70s as a part of this development plan for Copenhagen, where the hand is the old town, and um, the fingers are the new developments that have been made from the, from the 50s and on with infrastructure and new towns. And we're down here on, on this finger. And as you can see here, uh, back in those days, it was a very rural area with small, um, small houses and fields. And uh, this whole uh, finger with infrastructure and buildings just were rolled out over the landscape without any uh, consideration of uh, any nature or anything. And if we look back in the catalog, we found the catalog from um, when this was built, that should sell uh, this, these houses. It's actually quite uh, funny that um, they're really describing the perfect life here, where the family can be happy in the apartment, you have a place to store your kids, you have a place to store your car, and uh, the mother can do the shopping and the cleaning and everything. But um, yeah, yeah, the, the family pattern changed a little bit in, in Denmark s since then, and uh, there's some demands for another way of living. So um, we, uh, we started out this competition that it was by looking at these areas that were very labyrinthic. It was very difficult to find your way. Even though there is a big park right next to it, um, it was difficult to actually find the way to the park from your house mainly due to a complete traffic separation. So if you wanted to go to the park, you had to go through these tunnels. And it was very uh, unsafe, and uh, nobody really used the park. And you could also walk down to the parking garage, but that was also not a very safe area. Some of the, some of the streets were, um, for pedestrians were raised up in tubes, so it wouldn't uh, interfere with the, with the cars and everything was completely separated out. So we, we did this analysis of how the infrastructure here worked, and we realized it was a complete mess, and we had to do something about that in order to solve this, um, this area. The, 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 the uh, project was about renovating the area, making new urban spaces, and, um, and in generally upgrading this into a modern uh, housing area. So. Our proposal was to say, we want to have one main street where everybody goes out, so we kind of squeeze people together because they were distributed over this huge area, and if we could squeeze them together a little bit, we would have a better uh, possibility for urban life, and then at the same time mix it with this green space here um, that is parallel to it. The plan looks like this. You see here this very long, uh, new public space that we were adding in this two kilometer stretch. And it was also to give some diversity because this was a very monofunctional, very repetitive area. And uh, we needed to have some special identities, especially at these plazas where um, there were some towers around. And from here, we were trying to get people to go from all directions and enter this plaza so we could create some urban life here. So uh, this is what, what it looked like before, and this is what it's uh, going to be like in the future. Um, conceptually, we had this really difficult way of, of walking around, and we were changing it to this new main street for pedestrians that was connecting everything. And we even had some crossings of, of the road in some places so we broke the rule of this separating the traffic. And then uh, an important uh, thing here is that we were proposing um, identification with new functions, new types of housing, new pavilions, something that would bring new functions into the place, but also scale down these huge spaces that were there that were not very um, attractive. and. By scaling them down, you get a more human scale and they become um, more intimate. 
So the, the main plazas looked like this before with uh, just a big uh, parking lot in the middle and the towers around. And um, with this new scheme, they will have these small pavilions, new entrance buildings for the towers and this uh, public space going through. Yes. So um, it's not only in housing that we are working. Uh, we're also working with uh, urban space in education and sports, and that's what I'll show uh, this next project about. And um, it's a... Uh, it actually started with the school reform we had in Denmark um, some years ago, where it was decided that we should try to get away from this situation here, with the kids falling asleep in the school and trying to get them more active in, uh, in their learning. And uh, in that way, they should be, it should be easier for them to learn and they, they should have a healthier life. So um, there were some case studies made about this and one of them was this project here that we participated in. And it's basically a sports hall on one side and the school on the other side in a very small uh, village, actually. And the idea was to try and get a connection between these two and get some more activity into the school and some more learning into the sports hall. So this is what a school looked like before and it was very traditional Danish school, uh, not so much to say about that. Um, and we proposed this long connection here uh, that actually uh, is taken up of three parts. The part here that is a learning part in the sports center and this, this urban space here that becomes a meeting point for the village and the entrance, main entrance to the school and the sports hall and then the part that was inside um, the school. And everything was wrapped in this red carpet so it was really visible where this new element w would be and, um, and, and uh, where, where to go kind of lead the way into uh, these functions. So, um, we were there on a, on a nice sunny day and uh, the school were really using this and it was great to see also inside and we talked to one of the teachers and he said they were very happy about it, especially after a few weeks because then uh, the ambulance didn't show up so much anymore. They had some accidents with broken arms here, but uh, that's also part of, um, of urban life sometimes. And then, the great thing is that the school get this uh, big space outside where they can gather and they can have uh, teaching facilities in, in, in uh, uh, teaching outside. Yes. Um, back in Copenhagen, we did a master plan in an invited competition together with the Dutch firm MBRDV. Um, it's this part here in the middle. Um, and it's um, one of the remaining industrial parts of Copenhagen. It's actually one of the first images I showed you where there are some of these old uh, paper storage buildings, paper island it's called in Danish. And um, this is one of these areas where um, the city have had a success with implementing all these temporary functions um, that would bring the urban life there before the city developed. So it became very popular and um, there have been a lot of events there. There have been uh, small restaurants uh, and bars, everything on a temporary base. So they were supposed to move out at some point and um, they did. And unfortunately everything is demolished. It's gone. Um, but we proposed actually something else because we didn't win this competition um, but we proposed that that these um, industrial buildings should actually stay there so that this uh, new life that had developed could stay there because um, the problem with these areas is that when when these things are moved out and areas are demolished and new buildings are erected it's very hard to get um, these um, facilities in that everybody can use, it very quickly becomes high-end housing um, with no um, small 
shops um, for um, for the not so rich people. So uh, we proposed that um, instead we should keep some of these structures and some of replace some of them with new, and then build the housing on top, and then have this layer uh, layered project with um, with green gardens on top and shops in here and, and housing on top. Um, and yeah, this is very difficult to see. This is just to show you how many layers this building, this project consisted of, and they were all stacked on top of each other. This is what it looked like in uh, um, in Copenhagen with this, the old buildings down here and the new buildings on top, and then a way to preserve this urban life. We have an other example of uh, of an other industrial uh, reuse in in the Copenhagen Harbor. It's the last project I want to show you, and it's an adaptive reuse of an old shipyard. Um, some of you might recognize it because it was the um, it was a Eurovision exactly <laughs> in 2014. Um, I think Ukraine was in. And um, we proposed uh, after this uh, Eurovision that this these halls should be transformed so that we could pre preserve this event space in the middle and use um, the facades for uh, for student housing and uh, in that way uh, fit 2,000 student housing units in the, in the perimeter. The area used to look like this. It was a very attract uh, active industrial harbor and it closed down more than 20 years ago and it's been empty since. Um, this is our mayor of Copenhagen and uh, he's fighting to get more student apartments in the city because it's a problem every year that they can't find a place to stay, it becomes too expensive, they're sleeping in tents, etc. So um, with this project we were able to fit 2,000 apartments in, in a standard size. And the way we're doing it is by saying uh, these holes are made of a very thin, not insulated material. And if we want to preserve this, we have to renovate and we have to make a new facade. Otherwise, this will disappear when, uh, when this part of the city starts to develop, which will be within the next 10 years or so. And um, therefore, we, decide, we uh, proposed to uh, make a new facade based on student housing units, which would then also work as an insulation, so you could keep the this, this space in the middle heated. And um, this is what it looked like, or what it still does um, with these structures for the Eurovision. They have made a big uh, structure in here in the middle, so we didn't see this, but this is actually a very nice huge metal structure and we proposed that you would have all these hanging boxes here with the uh, shared facilities such as um, kitchens and living rooms and then on the outside you would have the, the apartments with a view of the ocean of the city and then you could sit in these kitchens and follow the sports uh, events or a concert or whatever would take place in here and um, yeah this is what it looks like in a section. It goes up to 20 levels in the high, highest point. So it's actually one of the tallest buildings in Copenhagen. And we could fit all the, the parking for the whole area that when it's going to develop in the, in the, in the base of the building and have the, have the event space here in the middle. This is a model um, that we exhibited in the Venice Biennale two years ago. And, um, I think this is the last one. Thank you.